Hello friends, welcome to Faith Hill. My name is Tafara and today I'm so excited we're starting a brand new series talking about living the worry-free life. Notice I say living the worry-free life, not the problem-free life. Because as long as you live in this world, you're going to have problems. Unfortunately, we live in a fallen world and uh, problems will come to the best of us. But the Bible spells out ways which we can live in this world and be worry-free. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine who is a doctor and he said uh, 60 to 70 percent of the, you know, ailments they deal with are really because people are just stressed out and they are worried about life. So what does the Bible have to say about that? Let us go to Philippians chapter number four and I'm going to read from verse six. He says in Philippians chapter number four, verse six, be careful for nothing. In other words, don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ. Verse 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue or value... If there be any praise, think on these things. I like how this passage starts in verse 7, and I want to read it to you uh, in the New Living Translation. He says in the New Living Translation, do not worry about anything. That's how he starts the verse, verse 6. He says, do not worry about anything. Man, it's simple and very clear. <laughs> if you, you can't misunderstand this. You know, you would have to hire someone pay them a lot of money to help you to not understand this. The Bible is saying, do not worry. And I know some of you are thinking, if I stop worrying, what am I going to do with my time? Because all I do is worry. He tells us, he says, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Man, I think that's profound. He says, don't worry about anything, but instead, tell God. Notice he didn't say, instead, tell your friends. He didn't say, instead, talk about it. He says, instead, tell it to God. In other words, pray. God wants to get involved in your issues, but the way you get him involved in your issues is by praying. The Bible says in Jeremiah, chapter number 33, verse 3, this is God making an invitation to us all. He says, call unto me. Invite me in on your issues. Call on to me and I'll answer you and I'll show you marvelous and mighty things that you know not of. So God is saying, instead of worrying, instead of being at a place of worry and anxiety and, and fear and so on and so forth, pray, make your requests known unto God. You know, I was a master wa warrior, not warrior. <laughs> you know, I was a master warrior. Uh, man, you could say I had a PhD in worry. I used to worry about everything. I used to worry about the past. I would worry about the present. I would worry about the future. Man, I was, I was, I, I lived a life full of worry. You know, I would worry about everything. You know, I'd drop off my kids at school. I would worry about how they're going to spend the day. You know, I'm driving back to, uh, 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 to my office. I would worry about traffic. I would worry about the guy driving next to me and the guy driving in front of me and the one behind me. You know, I'd worry about everything. And that's not a good place to be. That's why Jesus is saying in his word, do not worry about anything. That's why God says in his word, do not worry about anything, but instead make all your requests known unto God with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Man, that's, fun. that's awesome. That's an awesome invitation. I want to read it for you again in the New Living Translation, and we're going to zero in on some good points uh, that the Apostle Paul makes in this verse. He says, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Man, that's simple and awesome at the same time. And thank him for all he has done. He's saying, man, be at a place where you are thankful. But I like how he puts it. He says, thank him for what he has already done. 
Man, that's awesome. There's a verse in Psalm chapter number 23, verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And he goes on to say, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, I used to wonder, how does a rod and a staff comfort you know, how does a walking stick, think of it this way, how does a walking stick comfort you when you're going through the valley of the shadow of death? You know, when I read into history, I discovered, you know, people in the olden uh, times did not have diaries to, you know, document the goodness of God or the faithfulness of God. So what they would do is that they would make a mark on their rod and their staff, their walking stick. Every time God does something for them, they would make a mark. Every time God heals their children, they would make a mark. Every time God provides for them, they would make a mark. So every time they carried that rod and that staff, even in the valley of the shadow of death, while they are surrounded by evil, while they are surrounded by confusion, all they needed to do was to look at that rod and that staff, and it would remind them of the faithfulness of God. And while they are going through what they are going through, it would thrust them into a place of praise and thanksgiving. And that's what he's saying. Thank him for what he has done. Because when you start thanking him for what he has done, it will encourage you and it will move you from a place of worry and anxiety to a place where you can begin to thrive, to a place where you can be, begin to live in the peace of God. In Matthew, in Mark actually, chapter number six, Jesus finds himself in a situation that calls for worry. Let's go to Mark chapter number six, verse 35. Jesus is in a place where man, he, he has 5,000 men to feed excluding women and children, and he's, he's, he's only got two fish and five loaves. Now watch what happened in Mark chapter number 6, verse 35. When the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desert place, and already the hour is isolate. Send them away, talking about the multitudes. He says, send them away. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. But he answered, Jesus answered and said unto them, you give them something to eat. I like Jesus' position. He says, you give them a solution. Don't send them away. And this is the position the church should always hold. We are the, the, the center uh, for solutions to a dying world. We should be giving solutions, not sending people away into the world. So he says, give them something to eat. And immediately the disciples said unto him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? Whenever Jesus gives you an assignment, he's not looking at what you have in your hand. So when you look at what you have in your hand, you're going to limit what Jesus is trying to do through you. Immediately they looked at what they were holding and they said, this is not enough. But he said, feed them. And verse 38, he said unto them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said unto him, five and two fish. Then he commanded them to make all sit down in groups on the green grass. And so they sat down in ranks in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and gave thanks and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them and the two fish and he divided amongst them all. So they ate all and were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men. This is awesome. So Jesus said to his disciples, we're going to feed these people. What do you have? And they brought two fish and five loaves to him. And Jesus took the two fish and the five loaves. He knew it wasn't enough. But I like what the Bible says. It says he looked up. So he took the two fish and the five loaves and he looked up. Man, I used to speed through, uh, uh, speed read through this, you know, without really focusing on what Jesus is doing here. Jesus took the two fish and the five loaves and he didn't fix his attention on what he was holding in his hand. He fixed his attention on something above, on something beyond the physical. In fact, that's what the word look up uh, means in the Greek. It's the word anablepo. It's a compound word. Ana, N-A, A-N-A, blepo, B-L-E-P-O. And the word ana means twice or secondary. 
And the word blepo means sight. So essentially what Jesus is doing is he's tapping into his secondary sight or he's seeing something beyond what he is looking at with his physical senses. He's seeing something that is beyond the primary sight. There are two kinds of sights that each and every one of us possess. But it's sad to say most of us use only the primary sight. So all we see is the two fish and the five loaves. When Jesus looked up, it wasn't just some religious thing to make himself look, you know, religious. Like, you know, Jesus took the two fish. Look at him. He looked up and wow, it became more than enough. No, Jesus was tapping into a principle. The principle is called seeing something beyond where you at right now. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 18, while we do not look at the things that are seen, for the things that are seen are temporary. We look at the things that are unseen, for the things that are unseen are eternal. Jesus would always say to the Pharisees, you have, you have eyes, but you see not. What was he talking about? He was saying you have eyes, but you don't have the ability to see beyond what's primary and what's immediate to your five senses. So when Jesus took the five loaves and the uh, two fishes, he looked into the heavenlies and he started seeing something beyond the limitations of what he was holding in his hand. He started seeing into the spiritual realm. He started seeing into the realm where God supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank God Jesus looked up. He didn't look around. See, a lot of us are looking around. That's why we are in a place of anxiety and worry. You know, as long as you look around, you're not going to be encouraged. There's nothing encouraging about what is going on around us in the world today. I mean, there are children dying, there are people sick, there, there's nothing encouraging. That's why we should set our eyes on things above. That's why we should look up, not look around. You know, no one has ever been encouraged looking around. No one has ever been encouraged, you know, watching the news. <laughs> I've never heard anyone say, you know, Tafara, I was just sitting at home minding my own business watching the news and the power of God hit me. <laughs> and I went into praise. No, every time you watch news, you watch what's going around, man, it throws you into a place of depression. But when you look up, what what Jesus did, after he looked up, he saw a reality that was greater. He saw a reality that said, yes, you can feed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves. And it thrust him into a place of praise and thanksgiving. The Bible says he took the two fish and the five loaves, looked up and gave thanks. And when he gave thanks, what was not enough became more than enough. Thanksgiving helps you focus on the abundance of God. It helps you focus on the ability of God. The world is moving at such a fast pace that many Christians have resigned themselves to living in fear, worry, doubt, and uncertainty whilst forgetting how to live their lives to the fullest. In Pastor Tafara's book, Living Life to the Fullest, you will be empowered to live in the fullness of your salvation and walk in love, wellness, and prosperity through Christ Jesus. As a special thank you, when you partner with Pastor Tafara Butai, you will receive your copy of this practical, word-centered teaching. To find out more about how you can become a partner and about living life to the fullest, visit faithheal.tv today. Something that I wrote here that I think uh, 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 is powerful, I said thanksgiving shifts your focus from the problem to God. And I think we all need to be at a place where we can shift our focus from the problem to focus on God. Why? Because anything you focus on grows. So when you focus on your problems, your problems begin to grow. When you focus on God, God begins to be magnified in your life. And as God uh, grows bigger and bigger and bigger in your life, your problems start shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And all of a sudden you turn around and say, hey, where was that lack? That lack is gone because what? We've fed the 5,000. And not only that, we've collected 12 baskets full of fragments. So it throws you into the realm of abundance. But you have to look up. You have to see beyond what is natural. And that's what Stephen did as they were stoning him. The Bible said he looked up into the heavens and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. And when he looked up, he had the ability to now say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. See, when you look up, 
it insulates you even from the pain that is around you. Can you imagine? They are throwing stones at him. And he still has the ability to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Where did he get that strength? He got it from looking up and not from looking around. Because I can guarantee you, if he had looked around, he would have said, Father, I pray that you take care of these right now. I pray that you send fire and burn them. <laughs> but he looked up and it insulated him from the pain that was going on around him. And he could minister grace. So I'm telling you, man, when you look up, it changes everything. So what does the Apostle Paul say? So you got to look up. And I'm not saying you're going to be at a place where you won't have problems. As long as you live in this world, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be persecution. There's going to be problems. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says we should not worry. Instead, we should pray about it. Instead, we should tell God about it. Instead, we should give, make all our requests known unto God and couple it with thanksgiving and something special will happen when we do that. It says in verse 8, in verse 7, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. He says in verse 7, when we make our request known unto God, the peace of God which goes beyond what we can figure out will take care of the rest. And I like how it starts in verse 7. It doesn't start with the word the peace of God. It starts with the word and. He says and the peace of God, which means verse 7 is connected to verse 6. What does that mean? That means you need to Number one, be careful for nothing. Make a decision that you're not going to worry about anything. Number two, pray about it. Make it known unto God. And as you do that, you can tap into God's peace, which goes beyond what you can figure out. Man, when you get to a place where you can't figure it out, you need to tell it to God. And when you tell it to God, God will bring His peace. And his peace goes beyond what you can understand. His peace goes beyond what you can figure out. He says here, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ. See, when you focus on God, the peace of God begins to flow into your life. That's what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 26 verse 3. He says, he shall keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. The one who focuses on God will tap into the God kind of peace. It's known as shalom. It's not based on circumstances. It's not based on what you're going through. It's not based on the pain in your body. It's based solely on what God can do for you. It goes beyond what you can figure out. Some of you right now are watching me thinking, Tafara, you're talking good Bible, but you know, does it work? Yes, it works when you start focusing on God. When you start, see, because whatever you focus on grows. If you focus on the doctor's slip, that's what's going to grow. That's what's going to get big and you are certainly going to be overwhelmed. But when you focus on God, God is going to get bigger and bigger in your life and he will certainly overwhelm whatever problem you're going through. Man, I'm telling you, this is a reality. This is how I live my life. When the ministry is under budget, I focus on this. I tell it to God. I look up and I tell it to God instead of looking for someone to talk to. You know, I used to do this. In fact, when I was in the marketplace, I used to, you know, join these uh, 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 meetings that we used to have in the canteen every coffee break, every lunch break. Man, we used to get together and just tell each other the problems. That's not what the Bible says. It says tell it to God, not to, to each other. Man, we would start telling each other the problems and would feed each other's fears, would feed each other's worries. And one day I woke up and I said, no more, man, this is not helping me because I'd go and talk about it and come out worse than I went in. <laughs> and I realized, man, if I tell it to God, then I can get God's kind of peace, which goes beyond what I can figure out. Man, that's awesome. That is awesome. So watch what he says. Watch what he says. Let's, let's, let's go back to uh, Philippians 4, and we're going to read verse 7. It says, and the peace of God. So this piece is connected to verse 6. It con it's connected uh, to what has happened in verse 6. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. Man, whenever you feel like you're about to lose your mind, you need to tap into this piece because this piece will 
keep your mind. Don't lose it. It will keep your mind. Verse 8. I love verse 8. Finally, brethren. This is the Apostle Paul writing. He says, finally, so he's giving final instructions uh, to the church at Philippi. So this must be important. He says, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue or if there be any value, if there be any praise, think on these things. In other words, focus on these things. So Paul's final instruction to the church at Philippi was focus on things that are true. Now what's true about your health? By his stripes I'm healed. What's true about your bills? He has already met all my bills according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's what's true. The facts may say something different, but the truth of the matter is found in God's word. And let me tell you something about the difference between truth, truth and facts. Facts can change. Truth is eternal. It may be a fact that you have sickness in your body right now, but that's not the truth. The truth is found in Isaiah 53 verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. That's the truth. So the fact is what you feel in your body. The truth is you're healed. And when you start taking the truth and superimpose it over the facts, the facts have no choice but to change. Man, that's awesome. The truth is that God has already supplied all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The facts may say, oh man, I only have a hundred bucks in my account. I only have 20 bucks in my account, whatever you have. That's just a fact. When you start focusing on the truth, the truth will be superimposed on the facts and the facts have no choice but to change so that they can line up with the truth. So he's saying you should focus on whatever is true. He says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely. Man, you need to focus your mind on lovely things. <laughs> Worrying about it is not lovely. In fact, worry throws you into a realm of uh, uh, a lack of mobility. See, every time you worry and you're anxious about something, it cripples you of doing something about it. You know, every time I would worry about stuff, I never got, I've never worried into a solution. Let me put it that way. No one has ever worried into a solution. The way you get into solutions is by focusing on God. He shall keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So the battle is to keep your mind stayed on the Lord. The battle is to look up and stay looking up. Because there is nothing encouraging uh, around us. He says, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of a good report. Remember the children of Israel in Numbers chapter number 13. The good report said, God has already given them the land which flows and mil with milk and honey. They went into the land and they started focusing on the giants. And because of that, they did not grab a hold of the land that flowed with milk and honey. He wants you to focus on the good report. The good report is by grace, he has already given you that everything that pertains to life and godliness. It's already yours. And when you focus on that good report, it brings the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Man, this is good stuff. This can radically change your life when you start applying. What are you looking at? What do you pay attention uh, to? Because whatever you pay attention to, that's what's going to last in your life. In fact, the lifespan of a worry is determined by the attention you give it. Man, that's good. Let me say it again. The lifespan of a worry is determined by the attention you give it. If you don't give it any attention, it's going to die. If you ignore it, man, whenever you get an opportunity to worry, you should just ignore it. You know, just, psst, just, just, I'm not, I'm not even going to spend a minute thinking about it or worrying about it. Instead, what should you do? Pray, tell it to God. God is waiting on you to tell it to him. <laughs> you shouldn't even give it a, 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 a minute. You shouldn't even give it a second. You should not pay it any attention because when you pay it attention, you make it last longer you give it more life you know paying attention to a worry is like throwing wood into a fire you don't want to do that you want to actually take out wood from that fire and how do you do that by ignoring it when you are given an opportunity to worry ignore it 
Focus on what God is doing in his word. Focus on what God has already done for you by grace. And as you do that, you will tap into his faith. He says, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Other versions of the Bible say meditate on these things. Ladies and gentlemen, worry is meditation, but it's meditation on the problem. Christian meditation is meditation, but it's meditating in God's word. It's meditating on the solution. And God wants you to focus on the solution. Where do you find his solution? You find his solutions in his word. And when you start focusing on God's solutions, and when you start giving him thanks for his solutions, when you start focusing on his faithfulness, it's going to cure you from a life full of worry. God knows that you have problems, but he still gives you this as an instruction. He says, do not worry about anything. Don't concern yourself about anything, but instead make all your requests known unto God. And when you do that, there is a peace that's waiting for you. Child of God, I want to encourage you to start focusing more on God. See, Satan wants to distract you. That's why he throws all these problems into your way. What are you going to do? Are you going to focus on the problems or are you going to focus on God? Because whatever you focus on grows. If you focus on the problem, the problem is going to grow and be magnified. If you focus on God, God is going to grow and be magnified in your life. And you'll turn around and say, where is that problem? It will just disappear. That's just how it works. So the question today is, what are you focused on? What are you focusing on? Because whatever you're focusing on is what's going to grow in your life. The lifespan of a worry is determined by the attention you give it. My name is Tafara Butai, and this is Faith Hill. And I'm so glad you could join me. I'm telling you, next week we're going to be looking at what Jesus had to say about worry. And Jesus had something to say about it. The apostle Peter also had something to say about it. Why? Because they both want you to live in a place where you are free of worry, where you can just enjoy the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. I trust that you are blessed with this teaching. God bless you. Bye-bye. The world is moving at such a fast pace that many Christians have resigned themselves to living in fear, worry, doubt, and uncertainty whilst forgetting how to live their lives to the fullest. In Pastor Tafara's book, Living Life to the Fullest, you will be empowered to live in the fullness of your salvation and walk in love, wellness, and prosperity through Christ Jesus. As a special thank you, when you partner with Pastor Tafara Butai, you will receive your copy of this practical, word-centered teaching. To find out more about how you can become a partner and about living life to the fullest, visit faithheal.tv today. That's who we are.